Until the 1700s, Pennsylvania forests were untouched. But change came ashore, wielding an axe. By the beginning of the 20th century, Pennsylvania's forests were an ecological disaster. By uncontrolled logging practices, the bleak landscapes and often towns themselves were burned repeatedly by raging fires. We're suffering. It's hot. My legs are fired. So I got a 2K climbing. It's gonna be a slug. The route. This isn't your typical bike trip through Pennsylvania. This is a four day, three night bike packing trip from north to south, traveling 333 miles and climbing 27,369 feet. That's almost the height of Mount Everest. That's if Mount Everest had gravel roads to the top of the summit. So on day one, we packed up the bikes, we crammed in the gear, and we drove north to the town of Lindley in New York, where we started our journey. Day one, 91 miles, 5,692 feet, going through the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. Day two, 73.7 miles, 6,509 feet of climbing. And on day three, 67 miles, 6,348 feet. Our last day was the biggest, 99 miles, 8,825 feet of climbing, going through the abandoned turnpike tunnels and ending in Hancock, Maryland to complete the pants route of 333 miles and over 27,000 feet of climbing. The pants route. <laughs> wow, what an adventure. Oh, goddamn bugs. The route was designed a few years ago by Darren Allman. We took that route and changed a few things, plugged it into our computers from Strava, and took off. We had no idea how to bike pack. We've, none of us have ever gone bike packing. I read online that you should try one overnight, a short one to see what types of things you need, but we disregarded that. Just center. A ratchet strap, nothing that can't hold. A couple dry bags and uh, figured it out. Passed by a CCCC camp where there was hundreds of people that the government put to work and they built all these amazing structures and some of the roads that we rode on uh, the one fireplace was still there. I think Andy pooped in the uh, porta potty next door. Penn's Woods was invented from William Penn. He tried to prevent the colonists from ruining the land. He made a rule that no one abide by that said, for every five acres that is cleared, one acre must remain. No one followed the rules. Through the 1800s, the lands were ravaged. Pretty much all the trees that we went by were all cut down for the lumber of Pennsylvania. In the early 1900s, a lot of the state parks and government agencies that we know now, Mr. Rothrock, who was the first president of one of the things, the route was just so sick. It was just 85% gravel, so many historical things that we passed. We didn't have to push ourselves. We didn't have any times to beat. 
we just had to get to the next point without dying, refueling, stopping everywhere we could. We realized that you need a lot of food and a lot of water because the bikes were had to be 100 pounds, had to be 100 pounds, and the elevation just destroys you. There's no way around it. You need to eat a ton of carbs, and we calculated probably 8,000 calories a day we were burning. It's Pennsylvania. Get in here. Didn't even get in the, out of the driveway. <laughs> Two right. Oh, holy! Got the pants ride coming up. We're doing uh, 322 miles from Lindley to Hancock, Maryland. But I've been telling everybody it's 400. Uh, We've got about 28,000 feet of elevation. No, it's so famous. Population 25.5. <laughs> famous pastor of this church, well known throughout the area. Dandy Mart, two miles away. What else could you need? What do you think about all this, Popsky? I don't know. We got to strap all this stuff down. I think that's enough strapping to strap a car, strap your car to the top side of a trailer, drive 100 miles, and then check the strap. It'll never come off. Look at that, cinching that strap down. That's beautiful. Get a start in the pants ride. Thursday, July 20th, 11 o'clock. We got Alex. Let's yep. roll. Let's we don't have a nickname for him yet. We got Andy, he's already eaten. Ready to go. Bike weighs about 150 pounds. <laughs> Let's go. Andy already had his first tire change, discovering a puncture, getting the bike off the rack. We changed into our bike kick, packed up the bikes, said some nice things, and ventured off to Pennsylvania. And just like that, we hit the road found ourselves our first patch of gravel. North of Wellsboro, we started climbing up and down like a cork in the ocean. After the first real climb, we were sucking air and still bitching about how heavy the bikes were. To our discovery, descending on an absurdly heavy bike was just difficult. We had one thing on our mind, Dandy Mart. Yeah! Two slices of pizza. Two slices, do you want pepperoni or chicken bacon for Uh, one of each. After a quick pit stop at the world famous Dandy Mart, every flavor of Mountain Dew, chicken bacon ranch pizza, hoagies, you name it, they got it. We left that place smiling with five Cokes and we found ourselves riding the Pine Creek Gorge Rail Trail. We were in search of the West Rim Trail, which would take us to the top and look down at Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. goodbye to the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. We met some tourists. One gentleman told us, I ain't riding no bike until they put a tractor seat on them. Not sure what that means, but the one with it. How's that compared to the Grand Canyon? This is way better. No reason to leave the state of Pennsylvania in my opinion. Was it grand? The grandest canyon. Trail, just 
saw the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon flying on the gravel. Alex with a little low tire pressure. Andy on the El Mariachi covering us with the jams. Flying. Finally reached the end of the West Rim Trail and Alex had inflated his rear tire about 11 times since the beginning of the day. The descent off the West Rim Trail was 1,400 foot delight of blue collar gravel and washboard turns. About a dozen stops to tighten up our luggage and picked up dropped GoPros. with my dad like a couple months ago and I was like oh I gotta get home and like put sealant in I don't think I ever did well this is a good time to do it <laughs> oh, oh yeah. yeah ladder up bud just gonna put a bunch of that in there sealant might help go the cheater route uh, yeah sealant is recommended you know After Alex added the most important component to our rear tire, the sealant, we hit the rail trail again in hopes of baking the cutoff time of 8 p.m. to catch the last meal at Mountaintop Provisions. Dude, that last climb. Seven thousand feet of climbing. Hold on, start over. <laughs> Go ahead. 70 today, miles. Today we're starting from Donnie's meat cabin, doing 70 miles, 7,000 feet of climbing. We're gonna have breakfast, and then we're gonna stop at a convenience store, and then we're in the wilderness for what, 50 miles, till we get to Poe Patty State Park. We'll do a little creek hop in, and then maybe drink some whiskey, go to bed. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> Bringing the tower outside. Oh yeah. We awakened to a glorious morning of fog and peeping sunlight. Our bodies were repaired with IPAs, hot showers, and queen size beds. We snacked on butterscotch crimpets and set out to tackle day two, starting on the crisp gravel roads leading out of Piney Bell. Or was it Haney Bell? No one knows. Let's go, day two, baby! Woo! Heading to breakfast. Getting an omelet, some scrambled eggs. After descending from mountaintop provisions, we unexpectedly passed through Woolrich, PA, home of the famous Woolrich jacket, formerly known as the Pennsylvania Tuxedo. There's the post office.
Yeah. American sliced cheese. Oh my god. Hash browns. After it all. There you get drones and everything. Yeah. yeah. So you guys are how many how many pounds are you how you pedaling? Gotta be a hundred. So They're out there if you want to pick so it up and head out. Between yeah. the water, the bikes, and the stuff, yeah. yeah. It's to be here two more years. They do it three years in the same spot. Okay. Didn't know that. I learned a lot from yeah. that. Yeah. State college. State college, State college, college yeah. there. You end up at Beaver, Beaver Stadium. Stadium. Okay. Oh, oh that's, that's really cool. cool. It wow. was. It was very nice. The guy finished in five hours, four hours and something. The girl did it in five hours. Oh yeah. Setting sail from breakfast, we went over to McDonald's and ordered three double cheeseburgers and three McChickens. We then embarked on our largest climb of the week, a 1400 foot road climb through Pine Logan and Bald Eagle State Forest. At the summit, we expected to bomb down a paved road, but to our surprise, we were soon on a blistering descent down white collar gravel covered in a canopy of oak trees with fresh manure plastering our nostrils. The gravel continued to fill our hearts with love by quickly turning into a deep forest single track and eventually leading us to a down tree crossing. Yeah, backcountry, single track trail, the chunky gravel. Making our way to a convenience store for some Mountain Dews. A couple more thousands of feet of climbing. Oh yeah, smooth gravel now. Real smooth. Center butt. As planned, we arrived at a lonesome Valero gas station. The banner outside advertised it as the all-American gasoline for the Great American Highway. So we knew we were in good hands with the old red, white, and blue on our side. After an exhausting search for beer, with no luck, we re-entered the Great Pennsylvania Forest ready to tackle one big climb with a beautiful vista at the top. This turned out to be three brutal 700-foot climbs and no vista at the top. Regardless, we got to the top, descended into the beautiful RB Winter State Park, and enjoyed a double cheeseburger from Alex's pocket. Mile 45. 4,500 feet of elevation. It's hot, sweating. We hit every mix of gravel, asphalt, gravel, shale, chunky gravel, grassy single track, we're climbing, sand beach road, headed to the overlook, and bombing back into Woodward. It's hot. We reconnected with the unpaved group and started our classification of gravel roads. We were traveling on gravel roads that you expect the Lord himself to create. A beautiful, brownish, fine-packed clay rock gravel that brought cheer to all of us. It was coined God's gravel, and nothing could be ranked above it. on the last climb of the day out of Woodward, one we remember fondly from Unpaved. Once we got to the top, we headed down the best descent in all of the state, Cherry Run Road, that dropped us into the rail trail that would lead us through Poe Paddy Tunnel and into our campsite. Pants, day two. Whoa. Started at Donnie's Meat Cabin. 
A little chilly, 62 degrees. Some primo gravel. Descended, picked up breakfast at the Restless Oaks. Talked to some good local people and uh, got pancakes to go. <laughs> Andy licked his plate clean. And uh, biggest climb of the day of the trip, 1400 feet up the old Pine Logan Road and uh, turned into some primo gravel, mixed terrain, chunky gravel, even got uh, some single track and bombed down. Dude, best Valero, American made, American born, American served Valero gas station. Janice was a doll. Alex got some Pennsylvania birch beer. We carried on. Spirits were super high and uh, we just rolled. Rolled into Bald Eagle, three climbs back to back, 700 feet. Legs are chooched. RB winner, dude. <laughs> Double cheeseburgers on the bench. Kept going, screaming downhill. The spirits were high. We hit Woodward Gap, climb. Andy says, if it says Gap, it's never good. <laughs> chooched up, bombed down into Cherry Run. Here we are. Pants day two. What do we do? 160 miles so far. 12,000 feet. Halfway tomorrow. There. Biodegradable soap, so don't call the police. It's actually good for the river. <laughs> Poe Patty theory? All right, so here's my theory on Poe Patty. So back in probably 1800s, pretty small community around here, new Irish immigrant named Patrick. Um, obviously, you know, coming from Ireland named Patrick, everyone calls him Patty. Now, unfortunately for Patty, he had a string of bad luck. <laughs> he had a pretty hard life, died young. Um, and all the locals, whenever he had like a new string of bad luck, they always said, oh, poor Patty, you know, we feel bad for him. But the accent around here is pretty thick. So rather than calling him poor Patty, they called him Poe Patty. So after he died, they wanted to do something nice for the family. There's a little campsite opening it up here. And they decided to name it after him, Poe Patty Camping National Park. <laughs> that's how the that's yeah. how the story lives. That's the origin story. Yeah. Good enough for me. You ever started a fire with a McDonald's wrapper? <laughs> Two things learned on the parents' ride: <laughs> bring a blanket and use McDonald's wrappers as star fire star fire starter. <laughs> But for the most part, uh, Pennsylvania was tree covered, all 29 million acres. And southern Pennsylvania um, was primarily uh, oak and uh, a band across the northern part of Pennsylvania, what we call the northern tier counties today, uh, was primarily uh, beech, birch, and maple. Picture everything you see as stumps. Like, just picture stumps. That's wild. Every as far as you can see, like picture looking in that canyon that you rode through, stumps, just stumps this high, you know. And so, like, you'll you're probably not going to hit Greenwood Furnace. I'm trying to think if you'll hit any other furnaces, but um, they were burning wood like crazy to, you know, uh, smelt to do all sorts of stuff and make furniture, build houses. So, I mean. Wow. The crews would just come through and clear cut, get it down, get it to whatever river. <laughs> so you know you're going to pass through Poe Valley as well. Yes. So when you go to the Homans, so uh, Homans will be on your left. Is that a road? No, 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 the gas yeah, station. Yeah. Oh, with yeah, the world famous with sandwiches. The world with the infamous sandwiches. World renowned. Uh, with, the, <laughs> with the Penns Valley renowned sandwiches. Mm -hmm. So uh, across the street, when you're there is a place that used to be called the Utah House. And it was a uh, hotel and restaurant 
1800s, so it's been around forever, Edgar Allan Poe's family would come up here to uh, hang out. Hmm. Edgar Allan Poe did a bunch of stuff in this area, so the family, you know, did a bunch of stuff. It's named after the Poe huh. family of oh, Edgar cool. Allan Poe. No way. I don't know where the Paddy came from. Hmm. I get Poe Valley, but his I don't buddy know. Patty his buddy Patty from Ireland. Yeah. Buddy Patty. Buddy <laughs> Patty. Actually, Edgar Allan Poe's dad name was Patty, and uh, oh. no, I'm just making that part. <laughs> the rest you should as well with it. But yeah, because right. we would have talked about that for a lifetime. And the rest of that. Take one. Here, hold up. Let me zip. Let me zip up. So nobody has to look at my hairy ass chest. So this is. They don't teach us in engineering school, but we got a rack, pretty small. Put this bad boy on here, and then you grab your strap that's almost too short. Put that in there, get her in there, slide her in, get her lined up on top. Stuff in it. Second layer. Second layer. It's like an upside down pineapple cake. <laughs> Put that on there. Oh yeah. Squish it pretty good. <laughs> Straps are a little too short. They're perfect size, you might say. <laughs> Struggling, my, I'm weak from 120 miles of riding. All right, then you got a little nub there. That's how you know you're good. What was the advantage of this non-aero non -aero positioning? It's more about weight distribution. Uh, Yesterday we got a little lopsided. Physicometries. I don't want to have to hear any leaning tower piece of comments today, so I'm gonna make sure it's perfectly centered. What we got here? Got this is yourself. a bike packing? This is a Husky 500 pound load limit ratchet strap from Home Depot. So what you do is very carefully cinch this on here. So it's one side down. There we go. Get it. Get it in there. All right, pants day three. We're starting out at the famous Poe Paddy State Park. Um, doing a big, big climb to start out. Then we're rolling through Rothrock. And then we've got a famous sandwich spot, the most famous in all of Penn Valley, we heard from our neighbor. Then we roll down, do some descending, do a little bit more climbing, go to, uh, I think we have one big massive climb before we end up with Bearcat. And then Bearcat's got some dippas waiting for us apparently. And that'll end out the day. Our morning began with a redemption on the dehydrated meals from the night before. After discovering the lasagna soup had not been properly prepared by Chef Jake. Jake had added too much water and didn't properly seal the meal packaging. So we dialed in directions for the breakfast skillets and packed our bellies full of 700 delicious and solid calories. Our campsite neighbor joined us for our farewell breakfast and we got to chatting. This is where Alex's Poe Patty theory was devastatingly debunked. Our neighbor also told us our first bits of Pennsylvania's bloody history of deforestation. According to our neighbor, all the trees we would ride through today were once stumps except for the Allen Seeger area in Rothrock. Due to logging disputes, that area was left preserved and the deforesting efforts were abandoned. Once breakfast was finished, we set out for another glorious gravel trek through Pennsylvania's forests. It was a pleasant ride out of Bald Eagle State Forest and across 322 into Rothrock State Forest. But first, we had to restock supplies at the famous Homan's General Store. Homan's is for everyone, selling all of the Gravel Traveler's essential kit, including Coca-Cola, macaroni salad, Beanie Babies, and quick start guides to picking wild mushrooms. We 
began passing a significant amount of mountain bikers and later learned the Wilderness 101 was taking place. The Wilderness 101 is an ultra-endurance 101-mile mountain bike race held annually in late July. Wow, Penn Roosevelt. Hard work, pride, spirit, education, recreation, sports, camaraderie, and heritage. The CCC, Civilian Conservation Corps. We rolled into Penn Roosevelt State Park, where Andy had to take care of nature while Alex and Jake learned about the Civilian Conservation Corps. The chimney from one of the camps still stands next to the modern day porta potties. As we rode the primo gravel roads and reaped the benefits of the work put forth many years ago. Here we are in Allen Seeger. This is the old growth forest. So what we, we think. We think. I think, yes, definitely. Maybe. What, we, what we were told is that back in the day there was some regulation litigation and nobody ever had a chance to cut this bad boy down so these trees are older than the 1800s which is when they did all the logging up here. Wow. What a beaut. This is a beaut. Let's go! Whoopie pie review. Homer's whoopie pie. Let's Vanilla. Let me see that. Handmade by Christina herself. Man, it's been sitting in there for 10 miles. What so flavor did you get? We got vanilla whoopie pie. We're gonna give it a test. Wow, look at that feeling. One bite, one result. <laughs> Oh my God, soft cake. The icing is like a baby's poop of buttery smoothness. To lose my chain with it. <laughs> Nine out of 10. Damn. Nine out of 10. We're gonna have to send that into home. In Huntington, we stopped the cheats to stash next morning's breakfast sandwiches a nature break, and sugary drinks. We soft pedaled through the streets of Huntington and disappeared back to gravel in search of the steepest climb of the trip, Corbin's Road Climb, maxing out at nearly a 20% grade. We knew at the top of the mountain we would reach the day's final destination, Bearcat's Bungalow. As expected, Bearcat was at his bungalow, overly prepared, and greeted us with warm bush light hand-ups as we reached the bungalow's driveway. There he is! Yeah! <laughs> Give us a thumbs up! Oh! Oh, foamy. Got it. Got it. Day four, we're doing Bearcats to Pennsylvania Turnpike Tunnels, and then what, Hancock, Maryland? <laughs> I don't even know what's in between. We got 100 miles, the tower's been dismantled, so we're gonna be light, we're gonna be fast, it's gonna be a good day. We awoke to a brisk morning air with a touch of fog. After engulfing yesterday's Sheets breakfast sandwiches, we embarked on the 100 mile day. A beautiful sunrise melted our hearts. We talked with the cows and wished them adieu. 
Fine gravel roads led us along the south side of Racetown Lake and eventually to our new security guard friend. And he's going to hit Saxon, where you go after that? Down to Breezewood, through the yeah. Turnpike Tunnel, and then down to Hancock, Maryland. Then back there. And we got a, a car waiting for us, and we're going to drive oh, back okay. to Harrisburg. Then you ride back. Oh, no, we're done in Maryland. We're done. We're getting a ride in the car. Back to Philly. <laughs> Yeah. Back to Philly. Back to Philly. Phil, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> what is this place? This is a, this is a, uh, this is a resort. It's a resort? Nice. Yes. Wow. You go out there, you'll see the green on your right. Go past that. You'll see the pine cabin. Got 250 cabin sites. We've got like a motel down here and uh, uh, villas. We've got 250 camping sites. My, Maple cabins, pine cabins. Oh my God. Is this lakefront somewhere? Is this on lake the lake? Front? Is this on the lake? Yeah. It is. But, well, once you go, you won't be able to see it. Yeah. But the, like down here, the uh, villas and stuff, they're on the left, right next to the lake. Uh, campgrounds are next to the lake. Awesome. Come back for vacation sometime. Yeah. Yeah, come on back. All right, man. Later. All right, Thank you. All right guys. All right, have a good day. Hey, careful out, right now. Vanished back to the countryside, zigzagging through the Bedford County with little to no traffic, as it appeared everyone had been parked at church. For them it was a day of worship, but for us, it was finding the perfect whoopie pie. There we go. All right, whoopie pie review. The old sheet gobs. How's that texture looking? The name's already wrong. What's it's it called? It's a whoopie pie, not a gob. Oh. But you know. Survived in a bag for a few hours. One bite says it all. Mmm. Dry as hell. <laughs> Crunchy, sugary cream. Yeah. Tastes pretty good right now, in the middle of nowhere. Mmm. Four out of ten. Ouch. It's a gob. What can you ask for? <laughs> store. It was a unique building, yellow painted cinder block construction, figures of men from the Civil War and plywood blocked windows to match the yellow cinder blocks. Nonetheless, the front door said open and we would discover Coca-Cola and white gobs. miles left in our adventure and a few more thousand feet of climbing left, we entered the abandoned turnpike tunnel. It was a peaceful place filled with the local artist work and surprisingly the road through the tunnel was in good shape. We tested the echoes of our voices and huddled around Andy's bar light to make our way to the end. Creeper than I expected. Ta -da! Ta -da! Ta -da! Ta -da! 
75 miles in, 25 have to go. We're suffering. It's hot. My legs are fired. So I got 2K climbing. It's gonna be a slug. Day four, suffer in suffer class, day four. I almost just fell over on the side of the road because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I just got washed out by the gravel. <laughs> Nothing but natural camps up here. How you feeling? Day four. It'll be all right, brush some gels. Had a big bag of Chex Mix at the lookout. We're at three soaks today, I think. We bumbled our way through the final miles of the journey. A sign, Maryland, six miles, and deer parts disposal only sign gave us hope. We finally came to what seemed like the Pennsylvania-Maryland border, but there was no sign. Fortunately, just up the road a few hundred feet, we would find the smallest welcome to Maryland sign anyone could create. What day are we on? Four? Day four in the books. Pants ride is over. We, uh, where do we start? I forget already. We started in, uh, Bearcat. Oh, yeah, we started at Bearcats and then did a long downhill for us our butts off and then rode through the abandoned turnpike tunnels. It was super dark. There were two of them. Uh, so took a lot of pictures in the first one and then didn't even realize there was another one. Got through that, then we went up this brutal climb up a highway, saw a beautiful scenic overlook, and then came downhill into Hancock. Saw the smallest welcome Maryland sign you could ever see. What we got here? All right, we got the uh, white gob from, uh, what was that place called? Linda's, uh, Linda's, Linda's General, General Store. Store. $1.89, eggs, flour, oil, everything you would expect. It's expensive. Oh, good texture, feels good. Consistency, heavy, one bite. <laughs> Linda's got good people working. Nine out of ten. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Pants ride. That's a wrap. Three hundred thirty miles. How many? How many feet of elevation? Twenty-seven thousand. Twenty-seven thousand sixty-nine feet. <laughs> Dude, four days. Pennsylvania is wicked brutal, 85% gravel. We're doing this again in 2052. Later. Ah, Woo! <laughs> Day three. Cold. I don't know, we gotta strap all this stuff down. I think that's enough strapping to strap a car. How many dudes is asleep? Two dudes. Oh. Oh. 
do that last climb. That was brutal. 